It's not easy to make aggressive looking man in a wetsuit. It's, it, it really isn't. So while Maya works for Kali, she hired him because of his expertise in underwater operations. So they both fight piracy in the Indian Ocean. And he was part of the Kenya special boat unit, but she recruited him because of his specialization, which was his device, which he has called the magnet system. It was basically a kind of sticky underwater sea mine that he can put on an enemy boat. And then when they fire a torpedo, that's gonna end badly for them. And his favorite thing is to free dive. He can hold his breath for ridiculously long amounts of time. That's kind of why this season is also very important for us, is bringing an alternative to key roles of Siege that don't have one, those being Thatcher for Cali and Jaeger for Wamai. We are now protected. There is one aspect of Jaeger that we don't entirely like, and it's the fact that it cancels gameplay. And Wamai, on the other hand, is going to grab your utility and shift them in times and spaces. It's going to displace this, distort what you intend to do, there were other options to how to do this. And one of them being a device that instead of attracting the grenade and exploding on spot, one I would throw it back at you. But it's, it's not it's like super enjoyable as an experience for the attacking team, where here it's more of an interesting interaction, we believe. And the other option that we actually tried is, instead of detonating, it like pacifies it so that you can go to your device, pick it up, and then throw it yourself at the enemy team. But the, the biggest problem is you realize very soon that if you track grenade between you and them, that place is usually a no man's land where you don't want to go. So if you see this grenade being attracted by the device and you want to go get it to throw it back at them, you're going to die most likely. So that's why we didn't went with that idea. We, we do uh, lineups of all the uh, variations of, of the character that we do. And Greg comes to our desks and looks at this. As he was walking to my desk, I had this revelation. Maybe I just put uh, pants as a neoprene uh, diving suit. Everything else is regular, but pants like that. And this is the one he picked. All the other ones took uh, a week and a half, two, two weeks, three weeks. Meticulous research and down to the what, what the Kenyan forces would use uh, as, as a camouflage, which is DPN variant. We, we added the flippers on the thigh to reinforce the notion that, yes, he's a, he's a frogman. And he puts it not on his back like they usually do, but he puts it on the thigh, which is not very tactical, but doable. It, I tried it, it's not. <laughs> but th these are the clues, the, the cues rather, tell the character's story before even knowing him. Lots of challenges here. Working on making sure it would not be oppressive, so working on finding a comfortable ADS time while still preventing you from being too aggressive with it. Uh, the rate of fire needed to be tweaked so that you can still enjoy playing the weapon and not spend half of your run reloading. But nonetheless, if you miss your shot and someone takes the risk to fight back, they should win most of the time. The gun is a more, a bigger movement away from Siege and something new. The gadget, on the contrary, is grounded into what Siege is at its core in terms of team play. I like the fact that we have a new gunplay that hasn't been done in a very long time in Siege. Uh, the fact that we are bringing a gadget that is, to me, a cornerstone of what CG is when it comes to the interaction between attack and defense. And this whole character, the Kelly, is, is badass, like, so much, and I love that. She is the daughter of a pharmaceutical billionaire. She tried to join the military, and in fact, she did join the military, but then she found out that women were not allowed in combat roles. So she paid some people. She got the same training as the special ops, and then she started her own company and went, well, if you don't want to let me do that as a citizen, I'm going to do it as a private enterprise. And you guys need me and you don't know it yet, but you're going to pay me for it. One thing that I, uh, that I wanted to make sure when I was designing it is, is to make sure that all that stuff doesn't look handmade. It looks like properly manufactured, but it's like the latest thing. Visually, I may come up with some things that, you know, I just thought, oh, this could look cool. And then they look at it and like, oh, maybe this could give us some insight into what her personality is like on the back view, I just decided, oh, it'd be cool to have like a bullet wound, you know, like a scar from a bullet wound. Greg passed past like, oh yeah, this is cool. This could be, you know, and I could have like a nice backstory. And when we were figuring out like the big things we wanted to move or wanted to change. And the first thing was, okay, well, the train needs to go. And we tried to figure out a way to keep the train, but there was no way to properly like execute it. So we figured out, okay, let's just remove the train, 
and it's gonna make the map smaller. We're gonna merge the two buildings. It's gonna be cool, maybe. We're gonna try it out, we tried it out, and it ended up working. Obviously, also the haunted section, we wanted to change everything about it. That's one of my favorite things about this job is being able to do these uh, reworks. It doesn't mean that it's easy to change. It just means that it's really fun. And for players, we want to keep the map, like the original flavor, the layout as close as possible as the original. So it's a very, very big challenge. <laughs>